What is going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java game development tutorial. And today what we're going to be looking at is creating the handler to handle all of our game objects that we put into our game. So for example, if we wanted to say create an, uh, an instance of this test class, you know, we could do this. Um, new uh, test or, you know, test test. There we go. And import it. And there we go. So now we have the test, and then we would initialize it, and then we could render it, and then we could tick it and everything. But what if we wanted another test in there? Well, you might have the idea to put test2, and then initialize test2, tick test2, and render test2. Now, that's all fine and dandy. That's a way of doing it. And that's why I love programming. There's so many ways you can do the same thing. And what we're going to be doing is instead of you know having to initialize all I mean what happens if you have a thousand blocks in your game are you gonna have you know uh, block three block four etc that's gonna take a while uh, I'm gonna be honest with you and it's really not efficient to do so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a class that holds all of our game objects into a list and uh, updates and renders all of them so let's do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class here, and I'm going to name it Handler. All right. So with this Handler, what we're going to do is I am going to create a linked list. So linked list game object object equals new linked list game object. Okay. And I'm also going to create a private game object, and I'm going to name it temp object. Now what we're doing is we're creating a list and uh, of game objects and what happens is we're going to create methods later on that will be able to add objects to that list. So right now what our duties are is to render and update the list. So with that I'm going to create a public void tick method. And in this tick method I'm going to create a for loop int i equals zero i is less than object.size because we don't know how big the list is going to get so this right here will return the size of our list so what we're going to do is we're going to say temp object dot get i or no I'm sorry temp object equals object dot get i and what this does is basically it's setting our temp object that we made up here to whatever the object in our list at this current point is. So at this, we'll say temp object dot tick. And we have to put in our object here because remember in our game object uh, class, we have our linked list in here. Okay, so that's all we need. So we can copy this, create a render method. So public void render graphics G and paste that in. And instead of tick, we say render. Instead of object, we say G. All right, so what this is doing is basically say we have one item in our list. So it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna loop through this one time. And basically, every time it loops through, it's gonna set temp object to equal, in this case, it's gonna equal one. So if we wanted to put it in here, uh, or no, it'd be zero. So we, if we would put in zero, then it would only, this right here, this code, would only render uh, update the first item we put in the list because we're only rendering or only getting zero. So if we put an I, that means it's going to loop through. So say we have 10 items in the list, it's going to go through zero and then it's going to uh, update the, uh, the first item in our list. So, so you, the list goes by zero to whatever number minus one. So it doesn't start at one. So if we had one item in the list, that ID would be zero. If we had three items in the list, it would be zero, one, two. So there's still three items. It just starts at zero. Okay. So I hope I hope that makes sense. So now let's go ahead and create a method to add and remove items in our list. So public void add object in the parameters game object object, and in the method we say this dot object dot add object. And we're saying this out object because object is our list. If we did not put this uh, the this in, it would think we're talking about our parameter right here. 
So that's why we need this because it refers to this one up here. And then public void remove object, game object, object. And what do you think we do here? This dot object dot, what do you think we do here? Remove object. So that's very simple. It's just adding and removing items to our list. Whatever parameter, whatever game object we put in here, it's going to add to our list. All right, so now in our game, let's go ahead and create our handler object. So handler, handler, control shift over import. And in, at top of our run method here, I'm gonna say this dot request focused and uh, init. And let's create an init method. So private void init. And this init method will basically just initialize everything because it gets called before we start our, our uh, thread. Or no, it, it gets called before we actually start our loop. So in here I can say handler equals new handler. Beautiful. And in here we can just say handler.tick. And in here we can say handler.render. So that's as basic as it can get. So now instead of saying test one, test two, test three, you know, and then having to tick all of it, you just need this handler.tick and it'll tick all of the objects. So for example, we can say handler.addObject new test, we'll uh, put it at 100, 100, and then we need the object ID, and we'll just say test. Let's go in here and let's add our test. ID. So there we go. So now we just added it. And if we go into the test real quick and in the render, we just, you know, create a box color dot, you know, red and G dot fill rect X, Y, Y 32, 32. And these need to be cast to ints because fill rect takes integer parameters and we have floats for x's. So there we go. So now if we run it, as you can see, we get a box in the top left here. Now, just to prove, you know, I know I know you're not thinking that I'm wrong here, but I'm just gonna show you that if we import our random, which gives us a random number, and we put rand.next int uh what was our width and height? 800 by 600. 800 rand.next int 600. And we put a for loop on here. So for int i equals 0, i is less than, we'll say 50 i plus plus. And we run it. As you can see, we now get 50 test boxes on our screen. And that's not having to create test 1, test 2, test 3, test 4. It's uh, it's as easy as that. So that's gonna be it for today. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Now that we've got game objects and everything, we can start with creating the basic mechanics of the platformer. All right. So I will see you guys next time. Peace.